yeah, no, I'm just not. I'm not doing this. Right, and for anybody that's wanted to know, uh, my non-spoiler so far with Joker Folio 2, uh, it's kind of what I want to do with the script. Or, uh, New Gear, who this? Pretty much that. Joker X Guns, I guess. So, uh, <clears throat> hey, everyone, this is uh, Jason Todd, Real Nerf Edition, because no, I am not doing my Real Nerf namesake. However, I don't want to burn my member, uh, identity for the family, so excuse me for a sec. You get a Magis Malone. Yeah, apparently sunglasses and Real Nerf cigarettes is enough to trick them off, apparently. So, we're going to be doing that a lot here, kids, so uh, vocal the fuck off. Sorry in advance for any and all slurring, yada, 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 and uh, full spoilers going on forward. Because, uh, yeah, how do I say this nicely? Uh, Joker Folio Duel is, uh, it, it, it's, it's fucking shit. I don't know where to start. Like, uh, let's just, let's just get the obvious out of the way. Uh, there was a lot of conflicting, like, pre-production stuff of, um, uh, Joker, uh, to being basically, uh, I think a musical that I think Lady Gaga might have pitched. I heard that on the way here, uh, through, uh, Retro's podcast and stuff like that. So, i go with that on as usual. Now, the problem is... That would have worked, uh, one thing, uh, would have worked, uh, it had it would have been for COVID, uh, when they were pitching it in 2020. So let me put this shit aside. So, uh, that being said, uh, you're probably wondering what is my Matches Malone identity and stuff like that. Never really had one. Uh, it's usually a J name. I think it's John Malone or something like that. I uh, probably got that wrong. Uh, not a Jenna, I can tell you that much. Uh, hey, the Snyder Bros are still a thing out there. Uh, yeah, so let's get the box office out of here before we get to the plot of this, uh, whatever the hell this was. Uh, on a budget of, I shit you not, $200 million, it got, uh, a gross of 40 here in the States, and that would be cool if International backed up it on week one. Yeah, funny about, uh, funny thing about that. Uh, if the reports are right, not even 120 mil, that means 114 mil worldwide as of last weekend coming into this, uh, review. So, uh, a couple other things I think Retro wanted me to show you guys before uh, we do another fucking Halloween once you're in this house. Uh, yeah, he's got a Venom uh, figure. He pre-cut it. They're all pretty fresh. All right. Uh, yeah, that kind of shit. So, uh, they're going to have a fun time with us. Uh, counter spells or anything else as far as DD logic goes, wherever the hell he has with magic these days. So, uh, well, uh, that being said, uh, where do you even want to start with this plot? Uh, Todd blinked, you can definitely tell, um, the plot of it is basically, uh, yeah, what everyone has been worried about with the early reviews, core drama, and then the musical that you came to see, technically. Um, getting to the point, uh, most of the musical portions are in both Harley and mostly, dominantly, obviously, Arthur's head, I'm not even gonna call him Joker here, sorry. And, uh, apparently neither did Todd Phillips, because by the end of the movie, he basically does a screw you to the four or five fans that agreed that this movie was, like, their new thing. Um, did he bring back people from the first movie to basically just do a everything but in name only, um, clip show of basically what the consequences of Arthur's actions was in the first movie? In a word, yeah, basically, um, that also being said... Uh, there's not really much, uh, courtroom drama-wise, the, the songs, other than Saints Come Marching In, a lot of the times in Arthur's, uh, art time in Arkham is a lot of the probably few things I could say as far as IP, so I don't get retro here, copyright stricken. Yeah, I might be a total ass to him on the channel when I'm, you know, this thing of a figure, but, and sometimes I have a heart, long story short there. Now onto the question of when did Gaga come into this whole thing? Uh, minute one, and a lot of people thought, oh, what if it's the same thing like Zazie Beats from, um, the original movie where she was a figment of his imagination, and if there was a real Harleen Quinzel in this universe, she would probably be another, uh, therapist to just try to explain to, explain away his actions and stuff like that, or, uh, basically go one and be like, oh no, you're actually crazy, and absolutely you need the death penalty kind of stuff. Um, that having been said, um... The whole thing of the courtroom side of the drama is trying to prove that it was a disassociated personality and stuff like that. Uh, I'm just going to stop you right there as somebody who also does this as a dual identity to get into the mob. And this for these guys to fear my freaking uh, bad family. It's uh, quite a lot of uh, problems there. And uh, this is why I don't do eye uh, uh, makeup here, I guess. So... 
there's really uh, no way to do final thoughts without going into heavy spoilers. So uh, if this is like the barometer of this, like uh, those the uh, sporadic stuff that retro is known to do, uh, get out now while you can, because you get a very disappointing ending. <laughs> Um, basically, uh, the whole backdrop of, like, the court case is essentially, you know, Gotham being Gotham, uh, seeing a trial of the century and trying to make a spectacle out of it, which, to its credit, does pretty well, and before I, um, dunk on more of the plot of this movie, I will say the cast itself is pretty good, uh, in particular, uh, who'd have thunk that, uh, Stephen Coog Steve Coogan could do a really damn good American accent, let alone a, a Gothamite accent, Alan Partridge, well, Alan Partridge, apparently, um, for those in the UK, you know, you know. Uh, after that, for Harley Lurty, if I got his name right, uh, Harvey Dent, sounds like somebody they would probably cast in, like, the CW shows as a Harvey, not as, like, a follow to a billion dollar, you know, Joker solo movie Harvey, but much like Phillips, he did not want to go full anything, uh, origin story-wise, because, again, uh, everything about this, uh, and I think, uh, Cinema Snob said it best in his quickie review, uh, go to that, uh, one of the few channel awesome people I think even myself and Retro trusts uh, as far as that, uh, this goes. Yeah, uh, sometimes the, uh, micro dot on the, uh, face mask just slips in the end out, so, kind of face-off rules here, so. Uh, getting back to, um, just how it all really feels, uh, it, it is a mess, uh, there's no getting around it. Uh, characters-wise, uh, the strongest performances i'll say is catherine keeger uh that was uh, i think uh, arthur's uh, defense attorney and uh, the guy that played puddles from the last movie they gave it their best what they could with the material and and, and speaking of talent that actually showed up for this movie um yeah say what you will about uh lady gaga she is trying her best with the new songs uh to a franchise that never needed songs to begin with but hey she's at least trying to salvage i guess that broadway pitch she had for this uh for the sequel um, and I guess, uh, Joaquin, when he does sometimes turn it on, uh, the old Joker familiar things you guys liked about the first movie, it does come alive. Um, only, however, at least in my opinion, just the courtroom side of things, don't know on the, on the musical th side of things. Great opening, though, I'll say that for the opening, uh, for the opening of this movie. Uh, downhill from there, if you're asking for anything more nuanced than that. Um... Ultimately, uh, I could go on about um, the cast in general. I could go on about the performances, which is okay. I'll say this. Uh, Cinematography-wise, it's the same people that literally made the last movie. So that Oscar is definitely all in display and them proving why they earned it. So there's nothing really wrong there. The problem is, is Todd Phillips. Uh, there's no getting around it. Um, if uh, Retro was here, he'd probably say the same thing too. It's just definitely a hangover situation. And uh, I would definitely agree with it too uh what do i mean by that uh so let me get back into the uh, real nerf voice here sorry for that uh code three two two and yeah so basically if you remember the hangover sequels the first movie was actually a, a at the time banger comedy some things might have changed you know dated as far as jokes go you know how it is the sequels however are as deadly stuck at the times and definitely stuck of being a disappointing entry after another so that's basically kind of where you're going uh, with this direction with Joker. And ultimately, uh, at this point, when we get into the ending, again, spoilers going forward. Uh, yeah, or, uh, Arthur just dies unceremoniously, just gets shanked by who's probably his ass, probably not. Um, by that point, um, when the bombing happens that you probably saw in the trailers, so it was just a crazed fan that did it, not even a Harley, just to break him out. And there was like a moment of him starting up like you know, the gangs and stuff he makes in the comics, and Todd basically pulls up, nope, not doing that shit, uh, throughout the entire chase sequence, just recreating what he did in the original movie, you see his old house for, like, barely a minute or two, Harley kind of alludes that she boned the place just to get into character with him, and it is probably, like, the celebritization and, like, the hyper fan kind of stuff, and even, like, the true crime of all, the metaphors are there, there's no getting around it, it's just, could have done better, it, like, if he, if, if anything else, I'll say this just before we get to the final ratings, if Todd is very much embarrassed of the success he got out of this movie, and embarrassed of, like, the culture he was trying to explain, fine, I'm okay with that, that's understandable, especially in the closing statements of him trying to, like, force, like, Arthur to disassociate in real time and just say, 
no, I never disassociated. It's not multiple personality. I was in control the whole time. Oh, and I hate a kill that we all saw from the first movie, his mom. That was like another subplot he just buried under. So, yeah, he kind of had to force in character to be like, look, I didn't think this thing would get this successful. I didn't think this would work. It's it's a lot of self-admitting, and it, it, it's no fault of all, of his own. The cast will be just fine. Everyone is like legacy character actors, legacy care actors in general that wanted to have a higher profile after the first movie. And you can understand why, but... The only two people I feel like had to do this out of obligation, and no, it's not Gaga here. She actually tried her best to give her what she give her, as far as this movie goes. No, it's Joaquin and Todd. They're, like, the only two people out of this whole cast crew, I can honestly believe, just came here by committee and came here by obligation, which is what uh, Snob7 is alluding to. Um, also, uh, Cosmonaut also did a quickie, uh, basically explaining he never wanted to he he say the words, uh, this, what was even the point of this movie. He thought it was a little too casual of, like, a review quota, but, like, hell, even he was saying it by the end. So, now comes the fun part. Scores! Where's my new gear? Here it is. Yeah, I got this at, uh... Uh, Gotham Street Fair the other day, so just letting you know in advance. Uh, will we be doing light guns in this channel? Absolutely not, because uh, much like retro, I totally believe in strobe lighting, and that stuff really does screw up your eyes. Can confirm. So, uh, that being said, back to proper shots and getting back into character here. <sighs> yeah, this is absolutely too... Nah, screw it. 1.5 uh, out of 5 kind of material. Uh, in Retro's barometer, I'll say probably 2 out of 5 for the hell of it because he at least showed up and he at least gave it its chance. And unfortunately, uh, I'll go out of character here just letting you know how. Yeah, this movie's just straight up boring. Uh, like, he was trying to, like, say something about trying to, like, have an analog with the first movie, but myself and now back in character as Jason. Uh, yeah, we could both agree that, uh, this is just shit, like, straight down the middle, and, uh, there's no getting around it. If you're gonna be this boring, at least try to be engaging with the boredom, I guess, of anything else. So, uh, with the new dual wield out of the way, I'm trying my best to avoid, uh, strobe lighting for new YouTube subscribers. Hi, by the way. Over there, uh, to sit, uh, uh, hit, uh, hit, uh, hit the notification bell down below, sub to the channel, and end cards also... Right there for a non-ish spoilers review probably coming up in the shorts. If not, um, I wanted to do something in character uh, for Kara uh, to in, uh, in character for something for Kara to do for my two thoughts on the uh, Christopher Reeves uh, Superman documentary, um, which is I think expanding into theaters. Um, so if that is the case as of this recording, uh, please go see if you can. I've heard nothing but good news about that uh, doc. So again, that should be in the end cards as well as far as the shorts go. Oh, and uh, this week's. Uh, Critical World Short for episode 108, no, 109. So, uh, with that all being said, uh, take care, subscribe, and this is now back in character, finally, uh, probably for the year, Thriller Fred Hood! Well, you got your sequel, Todd. Are you happy now? Are you happy? Because I'm not. I don't know about you.